Hi everyone! In this video we're going to learn about sampling distribution. And to better understand this concept, let's look at the example. Let's say we have a population of 6 grade students and we measure their reading speed. Suppose that the mean or average reading speed among all 6th grade students is 125 words per minute or WPM. And I would like to remind you here that population mean we denote by Greek letter mu. And suppose that the standard deviation is 24 words per minute. Remember that the standard deviation measures the spread of a distribution. And again here I'd like to remind you that population standard deviation is denoted by Greek letter sigma. And what we're going to do next is to obtain sample out of this population. Here it is. Well, for any sample we can compute sample mean. Let's try to guess what it might be. We know that on average 6th grade students read 125 words per minute. Does it mean that students in a sample will read at that same average speed? Well, it might be the case, but it might be not. What if we got very good readers in the sample? Then the average or mean reading speed will be higher than 125. Or it may happen that we got more slow readers in the sample, then the mean reading speed will be less than 125. So that means that we can easily expect that sample mean will be different from population mean. So let's say that sample mean for this sample is 132 words per minute. And I'd like to remind you here that sample mean we denote by x bar. But what if I obtain another sample different from this one, from the population? Let's say that was sample 1 and now I have sample 2. Well, first of all, again, I'm not going to expect that sample mean for the second sample will be the same as population mean. Most likely it's going to be different. But more than that, can I expect that average reading speed for second sample students is the same as the average reading speed for sample 1 students? While this can happen, well, I feel like most likely it's not going to be the case. Since it's a different sample with different set of students, the average reading speed for them will be different from the average speed of students in the first sample. So let's say it's 124 words per minute. And if we continue in this manner by obtaining more samples and computing sample mean for each, well, we'll see a similar picture. Most sample means will be different from population mean and they will be different from each other. Now, just for the record, yes, it is possible that sample mean happens to be the same as the population mean. And yes, it is also possible that two samples would have same sample mean. At this point, you may be thinking how many different samples we can obtain from the same population? Well, the answer is a lot. For example, even if we have a small population of size 100, and we obtain different samples of size 10, which means that we obtain a sample of size 10, record all the information that we need, we place individuals back into population and obtain another sample of size 10, which cannot be identical to the previous sample, but some individuals from the previous sample can get into a new sample. And we continue that matter, obtaining a sample, placing individuals back and obtaining a new one. Guess how many samples like that we can have. About this many. This is about 17 trillion different samples. Well, this is mind-blowing, right? By the way, if you're interested to know how to compute this, go to the counting techniques section in your statistics textbook. So let's go back to our example, because that's where we dive into the today's topic. Because all possible samples from a population with the corresponding sample means create what we call sampling distribution, in this case distribution of the sample mean. So we're looking here at a long list of sample means. And as any distribution, distribution of the sample mean can be described. How do we describe distributions? Well, by measuring their center and their spread. To measure the center of the distribution of the sample mean, we're going to also use mean. Now, if you're starting to get confused, let me rephrase this. 
Here I have a list of sample means from different samples that came from this population. But my question is, what is the average for those values? Right? We have a list of numbers, we can find its average. Well, remember that average is actually called the mean. So that's why we say it's the mean of the distribution of the sample mean. And this part is actually very interesting. Well, we know that if you find average for all those sample means, it happens to be exactly the same as the population mean. So if I add all those numbers up, there are many, many numbers there, and I divide by how many I added, that value will be the same as the population mean, 125 in our example, 125 words per minute. And this is how I'm going to write it mathematically. So mean of the distribution of the sample mean has its own notation. It's denoted by Greek letter mu, which is same as population mean. But so that we're not confused, there's always going to be a subscript x bar. Well, why is it x bar? Because all the numbers in our distribution are sample means. So that's going to be notation. And as we already mentioned, it's the same as population mean which is mu, and in our example, it has to be 125 words per minute. So that's how we're going to measure the center of this distribution. And what do we use to measure the spread or dispersion of this distribution? The same effective measure as before, which is standard deviation. And this is how we're going to denote and find the standard deviation of this distribution. So we're going to denote it by Greek letter sigma, which is the same as population standard deviation. But again, not to get confused, we're going to use the subscript x bar. So that is standard deviation of the distribution of the sample mean. And that's the formula we'll use. It's sigma divided by square root of n. Now, just sigma. Again, that's population standard deviation, so population standard deviation will be involved in the formula. And n is the size of the samples that we obtain from the population and for which we measure the mean. So with this formula, we actually can see that the spread or dispersion of this distribution depends on the size of the samples. And we're going to talk more about that in a few minutes. But now let's compute the standard deviation of the sampling distribution for our example. So sigma x bar is 24, that is population standard deviation, divided by square root of 4. Well, for my example, I chose samples of size 4. So that's the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means. Notice that the standard deviation for this distribution is less than population standard deviation. So that means that distribution of the sample means is not that spread out as the population. Well, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But now let's generalize and summarize what we've learned so far. So if we have a population described by population mean and population standard deviation, by the way, I'd like to remind you here that those numerical measures describing the population are called parameters. And if we obtain all possible samples of size n from that population, and for each sample we compute, in our case, sample mean. And here I'd like to remind you that sample mean, as the numerical summary of a sample, is called statistic. So all these possible values of the statistic form a distribution. In our case, it's the distribution of the sample mean. As any distribution, it can be described by stating its center. We use mean as the measure of the center, and it happens to be exactly the same as the population mean. And we measure the spread or dispersion of this distribution by stating its standard deviation. Here it is. And it's found by taking the population standard deviation and dividing it by the square root of the sample size that we chose here. So sample size plays the key role in how spread out the sampling distribution will be. And here's the formal definition. The sampling distribution of a statistic, which is, in our case, sample mean, it can also be sample proportion, is a probability distribution for all possible values of the statistic computed from a sample of size n. Now, we already know how to measure center and the spread of this distribution, but interesting and important question would be, what is the shape of this distribution? And this is what we know. In statistics, we have this very popular central limit theorem, and this is what it says. 
It says that regardless of the shape of the underlying population, so no, no matter what shape the population takes, skewed left, skewed right, normal, the sampling distribution of x bar of the sample mean becomes approximately normal as the sample size n increases. So sample size we choose not only plays the key role in how spread out this distribution of sample mean will be, but also the shape it's going to take. And the fact that the sampling distribution might have the shape of a normal distribution is actually good news, because we know how to deal with normal distributions. We can answer a lot of good questions about distribution when we know it's normal by using z-table or by using calculator or other technologies. And here are a few more notes that clarify the central limit theorem. If we know that population distribution is normal, this guarantees that distribution of the sample mean is normal as well. However, when population distribution is unknown or not normal, skewed left or skewed right, we know that the distribution of the sample mean is going to be approximately normal if the sample size is greater than or equal to 30. Finally, let's look at the distribution of population and distribution of the sample mean side by side and talk a little bit more about the spread of each. These normal curves illustrate distributions from our example. So here is the distribution of the reading speeds for all 6th graders, so that's the population distribution. And here is the distribution of the sample mean. Now, how are these distributions similar? Well, first of all, we assume that population distribution is normal and therefore population of the sample mean is also normal, so they have both normal shapes. And we can also see that the center for both at the same value. Well, we already learned that mean of the sampling distribution equals to the population mean. In our example, is 125. So the picture illustrates that. But what's different about them is that population distribution is wider or more spread than the sampling distribution. It's also confirmed by standard deviations that we computed. Well, we were given that population standard deviation is 24 words per minute, and we calculated using the formula that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is 12, so it is less. But if we put formula and math aside, is there another way to explain it? Well, yes. If we think about population, while most 6th graders have their reading speeds close to the average or to the mean, 125 words per minute, we know that there will be some super readers that read very fast and, and their reading speeds are further to the right in our distribution. Also, there will be some very slow readers, but there are not going to be that many of those. So the reading speeds for slow readers are further to the left, and the fact that the normal curve is so close to the horizontal axis indicates that, well, there are not that many of the slow readers. Well, now think about the sampling distribution. Remember, the sampling distribution is obtained by recording sample mean for all possible samples from that population. And when we obtain samples, then slow readers that get into those samples are being mixed with other students that, are, that read faster. So the sample mean, or the average reading speed for the sample, is not that extreme, it's not that low. Same with super readers. The super readers will be part of the sample, but they will be mixed with other students, and their high reading speed will be balanced out with reading speeds of other students, so the average reading speed in the sample, or we should say the sample mean, will, need, will be not that extremely high. And that's why distribution of the sample mean, and in general the sampling distribution, is not that spread out as population distribution. In fact, as the size of the sample increases, the standard deviation, or the spread, of the distribution of the sample mean decreases. So this is what we need to know about sampling distribution and specifically the distribution of the sample mean to start answering specific questions. Well, all these questions will be about samples. So up to this point, we were answering questions about specific individuals in a population. Now within this topic, we will be answering questions about samples. For example, we can ask, 
what is the probability or what is the chance that if we randomly select a sample of 25 sixth grade students from a population, that the mean or average reading rate in that sample will be less than 120 words per minute. Or for this example, we can also ask how unusual is it going to be if we select a sample of 10 sixth grade students and the mean or average reading rate in that sample is 90 words per minute, which is quite below than the population mean. And remember, the event is unusual if the chance of that event happening is less than 5%. So, these kind of questions and many others can be asked and answered using what we've learned and most importantly, knowing the fact that the distribution of the sample mean has normal shape under certain conditions. To see the actual examples, please watch the next video and good luck in your learning.